a text of press statement issued on the occasion of the presentation of the 2023 general election observation report in Nigeria by the Church and Society Department of the Catholic Secretariat of Nigeria, Abuja, on this 20th day of July, 2023. Gentlemen of the press, this press statement that follows contains the pre-election, election day, and post-election activities of the relevant organs of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria, charged with the responsibility of organizing the observation of the 2023 general elections. It also contains the textual and data analysis of the reports of our 3,416 INEC accredited observers and over 10,000 tracing observers who were deployed in 33 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory approach. It covers national and state elections. It also has in its appendix the pre-election statement of the Bishops' Conference of Nigeria in February 2023 and six other pre-election conferences on the 20th of February, the immediate post-election conference and three other regional post-state election conferences on 21st of March in Lagos, in Benue, and in Enugu. Our findings. As stated earlier, the Church and Society Department, including Caritas Nigeria, deployed trained observers for the conduct of the 2023 general elections. Based on the reports of the various categories of observers, the following findings were made. One. There were widespread and very embarrassing displays of unpreparedness and or incompetence on election day by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, whose staff and personnel turned up at their polling units very late with incomplete equipment in most cases. Some of these staff were inexperienced, were evidently not properly trained, on the election equipment and procedure required before their deployment, or the acted written scripts calculated to undermine the process. Two, the logistics arrangement for transportation and other issues that would have aided the smooth movement of officials and materials to the pooling units were very poorly coordinated. Thus, pooling officials and materials arrived very late in most pooling units especially during the presidential and national assembly elections. Third, some voters who were transferred to the new polling units to decongest the old polling units had to trek long distances in search of their new polling units. A good number of them got frustrated and walked back home. Four, the presence of security officials at the polling units was grossly inadequate to maintain orderliness and guarantee the protection of people and electoral materials. Where they were available, some looked the other way as hoodlums ransacked the polling units and vandalized sensitive election materials. In fact, security personnel in some cases aided the Commission of Infractions on the integrity of the electoral process through the elections. Five, there was a low turnout of voters, especially during the governorship and state house of assembly elections, and this was largely attributable to the unsatisfactory ways the presidential result was handled. Six, the Beavers machine performed optimally well in the accreditation of voters through the elections, and we commend INEC in that regard. There were many cases of vote buying by desperate politicians and their talks during the elections. The results of the elections were not announced and pasted at most of the polling units as provided for under the enabling laws and rules. 9. INEC officials failed to upload the result of the presidential election to the IRF portal, explaining without conviction technical glitches that surprisingly affected only 
the transmission of presidential results. At the time of this report, AIDA has not explained what those glitches were technical, electronic equipment failure, or outright human manipulations. 10. There were instances where elections were rescheduled in some polling units where elections could not hold on the 25th of February 2023, but some INEC returning officials compromised and went ahead to declare a candidate elected without recourse to the rescheduled elections. 11. There were incidents of electoral malpractices, intimidation, violence, and other irregularities in Lagos, Rivers, Delta, Imo, and Boeing states during the elections. 12. There were manifest recalls to identity politics, differential citizenship, ethnic profiling, failure of consequences, complicit and partisan actions by some resident electoral commissioners monetization of the electoral process, curious judicial pronouncements, and misuse of the power of incumbency. 13. There was no ceiling on the number of voters per polling unit. The implication was that while some polling units have as low as 100 voters, some others have as high as 3,000 voters. This added to the avoidable confusion and debilitation through the voting exercise. Recommendations. Given the findings of our observation mission and hoping for a better organized electoral process in subsequent elections in Nigeria, the following recommendations are put forward. One, proper training should be given to INEC officials on the use of election equipment and the rules expected of them for future elections. Two, adequate logistic arrangements should be put in place for the orderly movement of personnel and materials from the local government areas to the registration area centers and the polling units. Three, information on the status of every eligible voter and how to locate his or her polling unit, especially for those who were reassigned to new polling units, should be made available months before the election takes place. Four, INEC should do an in-depth analysis and review of the performance of its officials during the polls to hand out sanctions to those who deliberately brought the work of the Commission to ridicule during the elections. The widespread incidents of failure of consequences should be tamed to avoid impunity. Six, security agencies should also examine the performance of their personnel during the elections. This should be done by looking at many video footages that were recorded during the elections. The attitude of protecting our own, associated with the topmost echelon of security architecture, should be done away with. Six, all reported cases of election related offenses should be investigated and charged to court to serve as a deterrent to others. Seven, the voting public should be adequately sensitized to the harm associated with votes vending and the illicit commerce that goes with it. Eight, holding all elections on the same day would be both cheaper and less burdensome and help in controlling the desperation of sitting governors and other incumbents who would be determined to install their cronies as successors. Nine, we are of the view that further efforts should be made by INEC as permitted under the law to push for complete electronic voting during elections. It will reduce to the barest minimum the obvious infractions being experienced during elections in Nigeria. Ten, we highly recommend that INEC should apologize to Nigerians for how its officials dashed the hopes of millions of Nigeria by conducting an election that fell short of not only the expectations of most Nigerians, but that of the international community, despite the huge funds approved for the exercise. 2023 general elections have come and gone, have left mixed feelings in
in the minds of most Nigerians. Most electorates are feeling disappointed in the outcome of the elections. This was because they did not feel the results as declared by INEC reflected the wishes of the populace. One of the greatest flaws of the 2023 election was the inability, unwillingness, and outright refusal of INEC to upload the results from, from EC8A to the IRF portal in real time from the polling units, as was severely promised before the conduct of the elections. Laws are made to be paid, and the situation where INEC obeyed its enabling laws in breach, it calls for serious inquiries and demands answer, answers as to why. Presently, 10 political parties have instituted 1,341 cases, representing about 90% of the 1,490 contested seats, and 346 judges have been engaged in different tribunals, making the 2023 election the most litigated, contentious, disputed election in the history of Nigerian democracy. There are chances that the number 1,244 petitions may not be the last since some other cases have not come to the fore. It's estimated that more than 3 billion naira will be spent by INEC in defending cases brought against it due to the outcome of the election. Using 3 billion naira of taxpayers' money to defend what was generally seen as a deliberate act of wrongdoing makes no sense. The ball is now before the courts, and one questions that agitates people's mind is why should it be so? If the court should be the avenue for determining who wins elections in Nigeria, then what is the essence of establishing INEC? It's not in doubt that the judiciary is the last soap of the common man, but with level of corruption, impunity, and failure of consequence in, in the country, one is skeptical about the type of justice that will serve to the litigants. It is our sincere hope that the judiciary should for once prove those who do not trust its integrity by serving the type of justice that will right the wrongs done during the polls. Finally, we commend Nigerians who made every effort to participate in the polls and we encourage them to continue believing in the progress of Nigeria. The process of entrenching the, process of entrenching the conduct of credible, free and fair elections in Nigeria is like crossing the Red Sea. It is our sincere belief that soon and very soon, with the collective will of Nigerians, we shall achieve that victory for the rule of law and sustainable democracy in our land. So help us God. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you very much, Father. So um, we'll take um, questions and comments uh, from the audience. Please um, 